Mr. Wathi here, and today we're looking at Arduino Lab number two. We're looking at programming five LEDs to do a couple of different things. Okay, so first we're going to make it blink on, we're going to make it blink off, uh, we're going to make it sequence from right to left, left to right, from outside to inside, inside to outside, and repeat. So it's kind of going to look like what's going on right here. Um, right, so instructions are right here. We're going to be using an Arduino with 330 ohm resistors and five LEDs. And here's the six different groups of code that I want to create. And I want to create these in kind of six different groups of blocks. And for this, we'll be using Blockly Arduino and we'll be using Tinkercad circuits to simulate our circuit. I also have two uh, attached here, and I'll attach this in the video link uh, on YouTube. I have the schematic right here, and if this is too confusing for you at this point, uh, you can also take a look at, uh, I took a screenshot right there of what this would look like if I were to con connect this with a breadboard. All right, um, one thing to note um, is that the bent side of the LED or the, is the longer side, which is the side that goes from the positive side. Okay, cool. Let's get started. So first things first, uh, we always want to start, click on that Arduino tab. We want to start with the setup and loop forever. And the reason why we do that is because those are the two uh, initial functions that Arduino always has. Uh, first thing that we want to do is to turn on our five LEDs. And we see that they're plugged into D2, D3, D3, D4, D5, D6. Two, three, four, five, six. Beautiful. So let's try that. So um, again, LEDs are outputs, and we want to grab this block right here, which tells us to put the pin digital blank to logic state high or low. And again, two. An easy thing to do here, if you just select, you just click on it. We can go Control C, Control V, or Command C, Command V to copy and paste it. And we're just work our way down the list here. I can copy it a few times. Two, three, four, five, and six. And that should turn everything on. And you know, it's always good to test out your circuit early on. I've already created the circuit here, uh, but you'll obviously have to take some time to do that. So let's test this out. Two, three, four, five, six, high, they all turn on beauty. So what I want you to do is always to be testing your code out little by little. Um, because then you'll figure out, you'll find out if there's a mistake or not. Um, so right here, I'm gonna grab, pop this just out here for one second. Um, I want to now have them all turn off, okay? Um, so what I could do, I could copy and paste one by one by one. That's kind of a pain in the butt. So if you just click and hold, and while it's being held, go Control C, Control V, Control C, and then now Control V, and the whole block pops out. And I can change these all to low, 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 low. And you notice that I have that delay in there of 1,000 milliseconds or one second. And this should look similar to lab number one, where we just made a bunch of uh, one LED blink. And that's what's going on right here. Awesome. So if we look at our, you know, challenge, we've already completed one and two, and now we want them to sequence from left to right. So let's try that out. Cool. Um, before we do that, though, I want to introduce some introduce something called variables. Okay. So what a variable does, uh, well, it stores information. And a variable can change to whatever we uh, set it to equal to. So we click on the variable tab right there, click on create variable, and um, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it uh, wait time. And what you first thing that you want to do, I'm not sure why this says percent one to two percent two, it might be a little bit of a glitch there, don't worry about that. In my setup section, I'm going to math, grab the number. I can set this wait time to equal to whatever I want. So say if I see, make it equal to 500. And now if I go back to my variable, I can grab the wait time right here. And wherever that wait time shows up, 
it equals what I said it equal to back in the setup area. So now um, this just makes life a lot easier. Later, we're going to be having a lot of these delays and we can now easily change it just by changing one number rather than changing it there and there and there and so on. Okay. So let's move on to the section of sequencing from left to right. And in order to do that, I want to turn on, let's take a look at our diagram right here. I'm going to turn on number six and then work my way to five, four, three, two. And again, for this, we only want one to be turned on at a time. So I want six to be on. And then what I'll do, I'll throw a wait time in there. So let's just throw that right there. Beauty. Um, and then what's going to happen? I want six to be low. And the beauty of having all these highs and lows, I just copy and paste what I need. Um, and then we want five to be high. Throw another delay in there. And we just continue doing the same thing. And like I said, on the left side here, it makes life a lot easier for us. We can copy that. We also want five now to go low and we want four to go high. And what I suggest doing, you know, once you have a few of this stuff here, um, a few lines, I would actually pop that in there and copy that code, test it out, see what happens. All right. Um, so it should blink and then it should go, there we go. So we see it went from six, five, four. And so we want to continue with three and two. And so we'll just continue doing the same thing right here. And for ease of use, I'll just pop it off to the right here. So we want four to be low, three high, and th pop in the delay. And we can see right here that um, the benefit of having that variable, right? If we did not have that variable, um, it would be a lot tougher for us. It would take a lot more time to go through each one of these um, and, and to change them, right? Um, so let's test that out, see if it works. Control A, Control V, press start. There we go. Beauty. Okay. And um, so what I want you to do right now, oh, I have an extra floating one right here. Let's just delete that. Um, what I want you to do is now that we have all on, all off, we have left to right. Let's try to do right to left. And you can see right here, um, so I just did this right here. Hopefully yours looks the same and we can test that out. I'll pop them all in a row. Um, right below there, let's copy that code over. And we see that our code's getting pretty long, pretty messy. Um, next video, I'll talk about ways, I didn't copy properly, let's try one more time. I'll talk about ways to actually organize our code um using functions but that's for another video so we go left to right and right back to the left and now we want to do the same thing outside inside out, outside to inside and inside to outside those are our last two um groups of code that we want to try and again i'm going to just you be using this code up here just to help me out so outside would be so my circuit outside is going to be Pin number two, and pin number six, I want those two to be on. So let's copy this one right here. And let's copy six. Pop in a wait there. So we want those ones to be on. Next, the ones that we want to be on are the next two on the inside. But we want to turn off uh, the two and the six. Add another wait. And finally, all that we want is the middle one to be high. And we can add a wait time there as well. So let's test that out. And I'm going to speed things up a little bit. Let's go with 250 milliseconds. And I'll throw this code right to the bottom. Sunglasses, copy. Control A, Control V. 
try it out. So we blink once, right to left, left, sorry, left to right, right to left, outside, inside, and there we go. And so now I'll have you try out um, going from inside to outside. I'll pause the video and I'll come back with the code. And to the right here, I finished up the code for the inside to outside. And so let's throw that on the bottom. Our code's getting pretty huge. And now we can definitely see why we use that variable wait time. And let's speed things up even more, making it go at, uh, let's go 150 milliseconds. Sunglasses, copy, paste the code in there. And it should be going pretty quick. There we go, back and forth, outside, inside, inside, outside, blank. There we go, beauty. And so there we have it. We, uh, during this video, we looked at just taking our ability to program outputs to the next level, just to make sure that we really understand what's going on. Uh, we were able to make this huge, huge length block area of code, uh, just turning on and off different, different LEDs, different outputs. And we also learned about variables, how it's a way to store information, how it can save us a lot of time, especially if you want to change the value of that variable. We can just change uh, one thing and it changes it wherever it shows up. Um, and that name, wait time, is what we call that variable. You can call it anything you want. It doesn't matter. Um, the variable equals whatever you make it equal to. So our wait time is equal to 250. Um, if I change that, it has a new value. Um, so thanks for watching this video. Next video will be using the same block of code. And like I said, we'll be using functions to organize your code, uh, make things run a little smoother. Um, Coding is all about making things efficient. And that's what we'll look at in Arduino Lab 3. Okay, looking forward to seeing you there. Like and subscribe. All the best. Cheers.